The Dogtra Arc is a great e-collar. That being said, people do tend to make a lot of mistakes with it, and that causes issues in their training. Dogtra collars are great, and they have a lot of really cool features, but it's important you know how they work. I'm going to hit some of the highlights of the Dogtra Arc. It is waterproof. It is a three-quarter mile range. It's a really cool collar. It's low profile. It's not super big and bulky. It is expandable to become a two-dog unit, which is one of our favorite features. It has 127 levels of stimulation, which makes it easy to adjust. It also has a vibration feature, which serves as a pager just to get your dog's attention when they're pretty far away from you and might not be able to hear you. So let's dive in. Okay, first, let's talk about the range of the collar. The Arc is rated for three quarters of a mile. Don't trust it for three quarters of a mile. I would never trust any e-collar for its max range. They're probably tested in a desert somewhere with no trees in between, no walls, no humidity in the air, no anything. In real life, we trust them for about half of what they say. So if it's a three quarter mile range collar, you could trust it for, yeah, I don't know either. Half of three quarters of a mile, whatever that happens to be. Um, your dog's not gonna be that far away, right? I would never get a hundred yard collar because your dog's gonna be farther away than that, but three quarters of a mile is a long way. If you can't see your dog, you probably shouldn't have them off running anyway. So this is plenty of distance for you. Another really cool feature of the Arc is it is fully waterproof. So when I say fully waterproof, these are made for people to have their dogs swimming. You know, a lot of people will have their dogs hunting and they go out, you know, in the water to retrieve a bird or something. We don't hunt, it's not a, a big thing that we train dogs for, but we train dogs to have fun with their owners, right? So they're going boating, they're going kayaking, they're swimming in rivers, lakes, whatever. These can be on for hours and hours going through the water and the collar is gonna be absolutely fine. You can see they have a little rubber plug on them. So they say whenever it's in the water, this is your charging plug, you know, this should be closed. I don't know how big of a difference it makes, but I always close it when it's gonna go in the water. The only thing I will say is when your dog is wet, you don't wanna leave this on in one spot all day long. It can create little pressure sores just from all that pressure in one spot, especially the oils in their skin and the water. So if they're swimming, I would be adjusting it pretty frequently, at least every hour, just to make sure you don't have any issues. Let's talk about how to actually use the collar and what all the buttons do. First, turn it on. The first thing you'll do is you'll take this blue button on the side and you hold it until it turns on. You can see the LCD screen is on. Right now it says 17. We'll talk about that in a minute, but that's just the uh, correction level right now. The collar does not turn on when you turn the remote on. You have to turn the collar on manually. This does not have any buttons on it, and it's made that way for a reason. I think it's uh, harder for water to get in there, and it's you know just a more durable collar. You turn it on by taking this red button here on the back of, of the remote, and this red button here in the back of the collar and holding them together. And when you do, you will see it'll blink green. And if it works, you can always push this button here if you're not sure if it turned on. And I, you probably can't hear that there. <laughs> the, the dog down there hears it, it is vibrating. This is the vibration function. So I always do a little check to make sure the collar is on. You actually turn it off the same way, so I'll show you that. When you want it off, you'll touch red to red. And I don't know if you could see that red light there. The red light went on. And when I push this button, it is no longer vibrating, which tells me it's off. And then now I'll turn it back on. I saw the green button and it is working again. So really important, you turn it on and off like that. If you don't turn it off, this will stay on until it dies. And it's made that way for a reason. You don't want to put the collar on your dog and have them swimming for an hour. And all of a sudden you go to push the vibration function to call them to you and they can't feel it because their collar's turned off, right? So it's a great feature. But if you don't think about it, your collar will be dead all the time. Because if you don't turn it off, and we have this happen to a lot of clients, they say, hey, the battery life is pretty bad. It's dying on me every day. Well, if you don't turn this off and it's staying on 24 hours a day, it is going to die pretty quickly. So make sure you turn the collar off when you're not using it. So let's talk buttons. To start, we're going to look at these gray ones. So we know the blue one turns it on and off. These gray buttons, the one on the front is the pager button. So what it does, and I don't know if you can hear that, but it's a, the collar's vibrating a little bit. That's a pager function that's not meant to be a correction. That gets our dog's attention. So picture your dog is running, you know, 50 yards away and you want to call them to you. When we train on an e-collar, we push the pager, we say their name and we say come. Through time, they start to realize what that means and we push the pager button and they already know it means come. And this helps because they could be out of earshot and it really helps get their attention. Now, I mentioned earlier, the LCD screen has a couple things on there. It has the battery level. And you can see that means this is fully charged. Uh, while we're on that subject, battery level of the uh, collar itself. Right now, whenever I push a button, it blinks green. And every few seconds, it blinks green. If you see it blinking orange, that means the collar battery is going low. If it's red, that means it's about to die and you should definitely be charging it. Now, back to this number. This is a uh, 17 right now. 
We've got this dial on the top, and you can see it goes from 0 to 127. That's your correction level. 0 is nothing. 127 is pretty intense. Every dog has a different working level. Uh, for a lot of dogs, it's much lower than you would think. So if, you were, you know, if you've never acclimated your dog to this, don't start high. Start incredibly low. We'll usually start somewhere like you know, around 10 and then build up from there. Great thing about the dog tread, though, is that it is 0 to 127. Some collars have like 10 settings or 20 settings, and they might have the same power as this, but you can only adjust by, you know, 1 through 10, right? So 10 adjustments, this has 127, so you can really fine-tune it for your dog. Okay, now let's look at the side of the collar. We've got this gray button here. This is your correction button. So the correction, there's two types, actually, and you can see we have a little toggle here. There's a little N and a little C, if you can see that. N means nick, C means continuous. What that means is nick, no matter how long you hold the correction button, nick means it just gives a quick little nick. So it's not a long correction, it's very, very fast. That works well for some dogs, doesn't work so well for others. Continuous means if you hold the button down, it'll correct for a longer period of time. So continuous works a lot better if you have a stubborn dog, you're really trying to catch their attention. And it's honestly just personal preference. Some trainers use Nick a lot, some don't use it at all. And it, like I said, it's really just personal preference. But we have the side button here, that's your correction. And you can just toggle between these two whenever you need to. Now you're probably wondering about these orange buttons. I mentioned at the start of the video that the arc is expandable. It can be a two dog unit. All you have to do is buy a separate collar and it will expand and can be used for both your dogs. I'm going to show you how that works now. Here we are with the arc and an expandable collar, so let's see how this works. When you open this up, in the box you're going to have an arc and notice it has an orange strap. You might have noticed these buttons are orange, they tie in together, it's pretty convenient. Let's go ahead and discuss the pairing process. So the first thing you do is take your remote here and set it to zero which we just did. Now I'm gonna take the new collar and then we're gonna to touch the two orange buttons together. And we do this until we see the green light start to blink rapidly, which it is now doing. And I pull it away. And then now we're gonna hold the two orange buttons for four or five seconds until we see the blinking change. And now if we did it right, when I push this orange button, it should vibrate, which it does. Uh, if we push the side button, it will correct. Um, you know, you can't hear that from a distance, of course, but the vibration I can feel in my hand. So now we have both of these collars hooked up. So when I push this button, that one starts vibrating. When I push the orange one, this one, I don't know if you can see, I'm kind of dancing on the table a little bit. So both of them are working perfectly, and I'm sure the corrections are working as well, but we can always test that. So now we have two collars. We can put one on, you know, two different dogs. One thing I want you to be mindful of, your dogs could have different working levels. So imagine you have one kind of shy dog and one really big, more challenging dog. One of them could have a working level that's a 10, and the other could be like, a, let's say, a 50. That's a huge difference between those two. This will not change. So you can't program and say, I want you to do a 10 for the, you know, the gray and a 50 for the orange. You have to change it each time. So be mindful of that because if your dogs were off leash playing, you can always call them you know, with a vibration function whenever you need to. And if one dog didn't listen and you'd have to look and say, do I have the right working level for them? Because if, the, if your dog's working level is a 10 and you accidentally correct them on a 50, that's going to scare them and could set them back a little bit in their training. All right, so let's talk about fit and how to actually put the collar on the dog. Now, you're going to notice these two collars look very different. Now, of course, one is orange and one is black, but also the contact points are different. So this is what they come from Dogtra looking like, and most brands look just like this, just small little contact points. Both points of metal have to be making contact with the dog's skin. Sometimes they have to be on insanely tight to do that, especially with a dog with thicker fur that's not very comfortable. So there's all kinds of cool options like this. So this one right here, we have another video on. I'm gonna put the link in the description below so you can take a look if you have questions about it. But what this does is it makes the fit much easier. So you don't have to put it on quite so tight because these don't have to touch the dog. It's just these two wings here. So let me show you what this looks like. Dash. So when you go to put it on, I will put it on, snug it up, and you wanna make sure that it fits tight enough that you can feel these contact points making contact with the dog's skin and they are, this feels absolutely great. A lot of issues are caused by improper contact. If you have issues with contact with your collar, I want you to watch one of our other videos where we get into those products kind of really in depth. 
But what they do is they allow you to just put it on. It's a lot more comfortable. It's not quite so tight and it makes the training a lot more consistent. All right, we now have the two dogs off leash. You can see Dash has on the orange collar and Anakin has on the black collar. You might also see the orange collar. The strap looks kind of silly. It's doubled up. It's a long strap. It's made so it fits even the biggest of dogs. As soon as you know you're keeping the collar, what you'll generally do is cut the strap to make it fit them and of course leave some excess for you know room as they grow. We're not keeping this collar for Dash. We're just testing it out today. So I'm not gonna cut it. And so I just doubled it up so it's not kind of flapping all over the place. So now, as I call them to me, I'm not gonna push the correction button because they haven't done anything wrong. I'm gonna push the pager button. So gray will call the dog with the gray collar and orange will call the dog with the orange collar. So when I push it, I haven't pushed anything yet. He just saw me leaving and was interested. I'm gonna go ahead and push the gray one now. Good boy, Anakin. Good job, sit. Hey, there's a boy, good, free. So you probably noticed Anakin got up the second I pushed that button. He's trained on this. You know, when you first put this on the dog, they don't know what the vibration means, right? Through time, they learn that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and call Dash. So I'll push the orange button. And as soon as I push it, he turned around and he's now circling over to me. Good boy, Dash, sit. Good boy. The first time you put this on, they don't understand what that means, right? You push the vibration, they might get scared, they might ignore it, they might run away, who knows? So when you start this process, you'll have a leash and collar on them and you'll just call them over and over and over again. You'll say their name, you say come as you push the vibration button and after a couple days, most dogs will figure it out and you push the vibration and they're gonna listen right away. As I mentioned at the start, we love the Dogtra collars and we love the Arc in particular. These are pretty user-friendly. I think the biggest thing you probably heard in this video you might not have known was the fact that the collar stays on all the time and you have to turn it off separately. Other than that, pretty much everything is just intuitive and that's why we like Dogtra. They're very easy to use and they are super reliable. We don't really have any issues with these collars as long as you don't lose it or run it over with your truck, you're probably gonna be fine. Enjoy your collar, have fun training your dog, and thanks for watching.